miserable day, eh? But it doesn't matter, because it's Christmas. Today, we're gonna harness the power of the sun. Woo! Even though there's not much sun today. So last week we installed our 800 watts of solar. And this week we need to wire them up in series. And we need to put in our MPPT and our cutoff switch. The MPPT we're going for is the Victron 150 60 TR Smart. And we're going for this cutoff switch due to space limitations that I will show you next. It's a 32 amp breaker, DC breaker inside with 250 volts max. Because the weather is absolutely crazy right now, what we're gonna do is mount these and run the cable on the inside and figure all that stuff out first. And then hopefully in the afternoon, the rain will stop and we can go up and sort out the wiring on the solar panels, connect everything up. And we should be probably making zero voltage in this weather. dark fear not we do have power there we go look at this amazing cool all right so here's the situation we need to put the mppt and cutoff switch right there so let's place them and see if we can fit it in there oh, i still need to connect my ground at some point soon um Screw that back on. It'll be okay for now. Not, not to worry, people. Don't worry. I'm not gonna electrocute myself. I promise. So, Mr. MPPT is massive. I think it needs to go like here. In the manual, it recommends you do like 10 centimeter gap everywhere. That's why I put up this aluminium thing. I think it's gonna have to go here. It's pretty tight. And then cut off switch is it gonna go in the corner like as far in the corner as possible there so if something happens you can open a bench and we can cut stuff off it's gonna be tight i will probably have to add extra ventilation in here which is fine but this is all the room we have so this is what we're gonna have to do what i'm looking at now is where do we pass the cable into this thing looks like we can pass the cable through the back here, which is quite cool. We don't have to have cutoffs at the top and the bottom. I think we can just pass everything through here. So I'm gonna take this breaker out and drill that hole. All right guys, so I've just been faffing around for about an hour, because I just realized I still haven't made a little bracket for the battery. And now that I'm gonna mount stuff on this side, it's gonna be really difficult to do it after there is stuff. So I just mounted some battens on all the sides, screwed it all the way through. An interesting thing here, if you're getting Roman batteries, is this lip sticks out compared to the body. So if you're putting it up against something, you'll need um, some spaces at the bottom. Otherwise it will be pushing just there. You'll have a pressure point. So I did like 12 mil, I think it's 11 mil ply spaces there. So it's pushing against this bottom baton that goes all the way screw. And then I'm mounting this strap there with these little steel brackets. I'll put a link in the description to everything. And then yeah, there are two brackets on either side and then I just got this uh, strap to strap it all down. I might add one more, but honestly it feels pretty secure. I don't have much access to these screw holes, so... Sweet. So that's gonna go there. And then this switch, switchery switch. Needs to go somewhere here. All right, cool, quick update. I ran, mounted that, 
round uh, cables for that. I just need to put ferrules and everything. Now my 16 mil cables to go from the MPPT to the link. So I need to put ferrules on that. The MPPT is almost fully mounted. I need to tighten the screws, but I was thinking first I'll put the cables in there just so I don't have to faff around with it too much. And one more thing that I've been messing around with is the equipment ground. So I've been connecting them here because there I'm gonna put the uh, multi-plus ground. So the MPPT ground is connected there and that goes to the chassis ground, the big 95 that we ran ages ago. So that's all connected. So now I'm just gonna put ferrules and everything, put the breaker in there. We can power up the MPPT, put it on lithium mode, and then we can go up on the roof and connect all the panels. situation update got my 16 mil with the wire lugs to go into the links unfortunately I couldn't do the ferrules on this end because the 16 mil and I think the highest this kit goes is like 12 mil so I'm gonna have to go pick some up that does a uh, 16 mil but anyway for now it will be fine the Victorin has a pretty good connector I think it's not a screw connector it's like a crimp thing when you screw it down so it'll be fine temporarily but I'll get some ferrules for that as well and here's the solar panel connector to go to the MPPT and then these are to go into the breaker so this one goes to the MPPT and then this one goes to the solar panel and the ferrules are awesome so I love this stuff but make sure that when you get one get one that does up to 16 mil uh, I'll put a link in the description So everything is wired up apart from the solar on the top. So I'm gonna turn it on and see if we can configure this thing before we hook up to the solar. So let's hope there are no fireworks. I already done my sanity test to make sure that I haven't done anything horribly wrong. So let's give it a go. We've got flashing lights. Let's see what the app says. The app is already showing. There we go. Give it a quick update. So while things are updating, I'll give you a close up of how things are looking. There's the MPPT. There's a switch. I already put the cover on. And now I'll show you a quick look around the back. Also, the van is an absolute mess. Cool. So if you're curious what happens the first time you power it up and done your updates, shows the voltage and obviously we have no power coming in yet to configure to lithium there is a switch on the bottom of the mppt and then if we go to the settings you can go to battery battery preset select preset lithium ion phosphate then it will set up some basic presets for now this will do Good morning, welcome back to this week's van conversion. So I haven't started a video in probably about a month. I've been ridiculously busy at work. So me and Lance have been doing complete split shifts in the van. I've been cracking on with the upper cabinets and the doors and kind of little fiddly jobs. So I haven't actually got much done. But as you would have seen him doing all of the big boy jobs without me. So if you, as you would have seen in a couple of videos ago, these are the handles that we've got. So they're nine centimeter from the hole to hole or not just over nine about nine and a half however the actual bolts that come with it are these guys so they're m4s but it's a 25 mil and they are way too long for this ply even if when i've cut it down they just don't work so if you're buying these i'll leave the link in the description from amazon but i've used nine mil and five and a half mil for the edging and you're going to need these bolts 
They're M4, 16mm and they work a treat. They're the countersink ones because the ones that come in the actual pack aren't and they sat way too far out no matter how much I countersunk it in and the actual heads of it are absolutely crap. I kept just screwing it out and then couldn't get it out so I had to ply it out. So if you're getting these handles from Amazon, it's probably the same with the longer ones as well. You need to get these. I got these for B&Q. I think they're like a four quid for the pack. So quite quite expenny but you know does the job right so i'm not going to do like a proper in-depth tutorial on this because i'm sure you know all how to attach handles but i just kind of want to give you a guide as to what i was doing so um, what i was doing i was measuring all the way along here to get your center point so my doors are 46 centimeters so what's half of that 23 whoops and then i know that my my strips are five centimeters so i just need to work out the two and a half in the middle so once you've got your middle point on your actual door i was then just doing 4.9 either side of that to get where you need to drill the holes for the handles now my first one did not go to plan and i done the holes slightly off which was rather annoying but hey ho so once you've got those i literally just drill two holes for the bolts that i was using um i'm using a 3.5 mil drill head to drill these out and then on the other side i'm just going to count a sink so that the screws sit nicely in there like so and then these guys will sit nice and flat in there and then what i'm going to do i haven't done it yet but what i am going to do once i finish them all is just wood fall over that give it a sand down and then give it all a final look of lick of paint because they have been a bit scratched when they've been sort of in and out of the van and in that other house and everything so then all i'm doing is getting my two bolts and starting them off this side so that they hit all the way to the other so that i can match the handles up So then once the bolts are literally about a couple mil through, I have then just been lining up the handles. This is when you hope that they work and they're actually in line. Because if I'm honest, I haven't quite got it down to a T yet. I feel like that one's too far across. I think my issues are my hole isn't straight. And then, just like that, you've got your handle on. And then the back at the moment is looking like this. So like I said, I'm probably just going to wood fill over these. You're not going to see them anyway, but I think, you know, it'll just make it look a bit nicer. Give them all another lick of paint and they are good to go. Righty, so as you can see it was an utter miserable day on Sunday so I actually did Saturday evening in the dark as I wired up all the panels as in the dark they don't produce any electricity so I didn't have to cover them up so it made life a bit easier. So what we're going to do is wire up these panels in series which means just connecting the positives and the negatives together and we should be good to go. So to do that the first thing I did is I made an extension cable as the positive from the front panel needed to come all the way back to the cable entry gland. So once I made the extension cable, I just needed to add MC4 connectors, a male and a female, on the cable entry gland cable that you saw last week. So once I made all the connections, it was just a matter of fact of connecting the positives and the negatives together, and we were good to go. It is raining like crazy, but should I be getting zero volts? Man, we just had the biggest rainstorm ever. I've been up on the roof checking connections and I pulled this out as well because I wasn't gonna get in any voltage, but I got rained out. So anyway, it's like two hours later now and we have sun. So let's check if we have any voltage now. There is still nothing. How is that possible? what is going wrong oh i don't get it i have voltage if i unplug the mc4 connector at the top where all the panels are connected and i check voltage at the panel i'm getting 80 volts absolutely fine but 
as soon as I make the MC4 connection at the top that then just comes in here into this breaker on this end I'm not getting anything the only thing that could be wrong I guess is the MC4 connector where the panels connect because we're getting voltage at the end of the panels oh my god one hour later right come on this has to be it I went up and messed around with some of the MC4 connectors and spent an hour troubleshooting yay okay cool we have 80 volts I have 80 volts coming in here and I have nothing going out because the switch is off. Cool, that's working. So we're gonna go unplug upstairs and then put this back in how it's supposed to be because don't wanna be messing around with this when we have 80 volts coming in. Although it's a bit cloudy and it's probably not that many amps. I'm gonna disconnect at the top, put this back in nice and neat and hopefully we can finally get this bloody thing working, woo! All right, here we go. Let's put back in. We're gonna power the MPPT up. Let's see what happens. Here we go, boys. The moment of truth. No sparks, please. There we go, look at that. 80 volts coming in. Zero amps. And there we go. We're charging. Woo! We have one amp of charge. 12 watts, 10 watts. Is that all the sun we have at the minute? I would have thought we would have a bit more. Let's see what's going on, keep an eye on it. 10 watts of solar at the minute. We're only getting about, I mean, I guess we're fully in the shade. Okay, well, let's see how this goes. Well, something's happening. All right, guys, here we are. It's the next day now. We have some sun outside, so I just want to keep you guys updated how things are looking. We are getting 130 watts at the moment, 10 amps an hour, and yeah. I'll keep you guys updated. So here is a quick screenshot I took at the end of the day. We only get about two or three hours of direct sunshine on the van as the house is shading it throughout the day and it is November now. So for the whole day, we got about 700 watts or solar, which is about 60 amps. So I would say that's pretty good for uh, November. And I wasn't actually sure if this is good yield or not. And Steve from Roma sent me a web page from Victron uh, that gives you a great calculator. So if you just go on the website, I'll put a link in the description. You can put in your panel details like open circuit voltage and all that stuff. So once you add all your details that you should be able to find easily on the website that you bought your panels from. If you scroll down, it will tell you what MPPT you should get as well. And if you scroll down, there's a little chart at the bottom where if you put in your location, it will tell you what sort of yield you should expect based on your location. And as you can see for November with 800 watts of solar, we should be getting around maybe half a kilowatt and we got slightly more than that. So we got about 700 uh, watts, which is 0.7 kilowatts. And it's interesting if you put Spain in, you're getting two kilowatts in November. So that's crazy. But anyway, this is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments and we'll see you guys next week.